हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर अजय शर्मा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग जेम्स इंजीनियरिंग मैनेजमेंट टेक्निकल कैंपस नॉलेज पार थर्ड ग्रेटर नोएडा द सब्जेक्ट दैट आई टीच इन दिस सेमेस्टर फॉर बी टेक सेवन सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट्स is opto electronics and optical communication and the topic that i discuss today in this video lecture is semiconductor lasers for optical fiber communication system and their types well uh, laser type laser diodes and light emitting diodes that we already discussed in previous video lectures are two optical sources that utilize in optical fiber communication system and both are used at the transmitter side but if you compare led with laser diode laser diodes are superior right and why they are superior that we will answer that in this lecture so a laser diode a laser is a device that produce optical radiation by the process of stimulated emission the process that involved in laser diode is stimulated emissions and the process is that involved in led is spontaneous emission and there is a difference in spontaneous emission and stimulated emissions stimulated emission means you have a multiple emissions you you have you have high intensity of radiation that come in the category of stimulated emissions right so laser diode is no doubt is advanced as compared to light emitting diodes so it is necessary to contain photons produced by stimulated emission within the laser activity active region means in laser diode the photons are produced by the process of stimulated emission and in led photons are produced by spontaneous emission right so this is one of the main difference between laser diode and leds and if you see the picture this is a optical cavity this is optical cavity and the two end is we place a reflecting mirror because we want reflections of light we want to and fro motion of light light reflected from one face reflect back to reach another face that we want that is optical feedback and that optical feedback is used because we need gain right we need optical gain so this particular picture and shows an optical cavity formed to contain the emitted photons by placing one reflecting mirror at each end of an amplifying medium so this is also as a amplifying medium because we we get huge amount of light more number of photons uh, we get from this particular cavity so in this cavity there is a little bit of hole so that light is coming from that hole and this is nothing but is the optical output right so this is the optical cavity that that formed in 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 the structure of laser diode to get the stimulated stimulated light or stimulated emissions that we get in the form of photons so photons that we get in this laser diode is by the process of stimulated emission and how this how we form the cavity one mirror is made partially reflecting so that some radiation can escape from the cavity from coupling to an optical fiber so whatever the light that is coming from cavity is is just like optical output where you get the light now that light should be coupled to the optical fiber so for a particular laser structure there are only certain wavelengths that will be amplified by that laser right so laser uh, have a certain window that we use you know certain wavelengths that are amplified by this particular laser action amplification occurs when selected wavelengths are also called laser modes reflect back and forth through the cavity so laser modes are reflect back and forth through the this cavity because of 
the reflecting mirror that you placed at both the ends of this cavity. Now for lasing to occur, the optical gain of the selected modes must exceed the optical loss during one round trip through the cavity. Right? So this process is referred to as optical feedback. So if you look at the picture, you know, there is a recombination take place of electron on hole and because of the recombination of electron on hole and because of the radiative recombination photons are to be produced and these photons are coming out from this device in the form of light emission because light is composed of photons these are the particles of light so these particles are coming out from uh, uh, from the output section of this structure so this is also a cavity so that the lasing uh, threshold is the lowest drive current level. You know the basic thing is that in any optical source, laser or LED, you need input. Input as a current, output as a optical light, or you get a light at the output. So input of the optical source is current, and output is a light. So you need a current for lasing actions to start. So the lasing threshold is the lowest driving drive current level at which the output of the laser results primarily from stimulated emission rather than spontaneous emission uh, try to understand this point we need a, this there is a certain amount of current after which you know stimulation stimulated emission occur so every laser need this minimum amount of current that you called as a threshold current to start lasing action, to start gain, so that you get stimulated emission rather than spontaneous emission. Means, if the current that you provide at the laser diode is not sufficient or below threshold, then lasing is not a start, or you may say stimulated emission is not a start. For to start stimulated emission, where you get a huge amount of photons or disciplined photon, have high intensity in photons, you need a certain amount of current, and that current is a threshold current. So you always operate your laser diode a current which is above threshold so that you always get stimulated emission rather than spontaneous emission, right? So if you look at the picture, you this particular slide, but this figure illustrates you. This figure illustrates that the transition from spontaneous emission to stimulated emission by plotting the relative optical output power and input drive current of a semiconductor laser diode so in this particular we have a graph we have a characteristic input current drive current versus optical output power so look at this for the for a small amount of current we have a spontaneous emission but at a certain interval of time at a certain point because of that point if you look at that point this is a threshold current after that you have a huge amount of photons that you get means huge amount of optical power that you get and this is the stimulated emission so stimulated emission need a minimum amount of current that is called as a threshold current and before that laser diode act, act as a led so the lowest current at which the stimulated emission exceed spontaneous emission is the threshold current now again and what has happened? What's happened before the threshold current? If you look at the picture, before the threshold current is reached, the optical output power increase only slightly with a small increase in drive current. However, after the threshold current is reached, the optical output power increases significantly with a small change in drive current, and that is clear from this picture, right? So you always need a minimum amount of current which you call as a threshold current to get stimulated emission of light. So laser operate on the current which is above threshold. Then come to certain points. What you see in previous figure. The optical output power as a function of input drive current of a semiconductor laser diode. So these are the, if you want to draw the characteristics of laser diode or led what you have to do you have to take uh, input drive current at axis and output optical power at y axis so this is uh, this is a you know uh, 
optical output power versus input drive current and these are the characteristics of a laser or leds so many types of materials including gas liquid and semiconductors can form the lasing medium so you also need a lasing medium when you form a cavity for lasing action for stimulated light of stimulated light that you want then you need a medium also so semiconductor laser diodes are the primary laser used in fiber optics a laser diode emits light that is highly monochromatic and very directional monochromatic means it contain only a single wavelength and very directional means all the photons are to be you know are to be uh, follow only one direction path this is the meaning of directional and monochromatic so this is the this means that the laser diodes output has a narrow spectral width and a small output beam angle that we want because if you have a narrow spectral bit and small output beam angle then it is very easy to you know couple your light uh, from laser diode into the optical fiber because after after you get the light from a laser diode output the second step is to couple this light into the optical fiber so when your uh, uh, when your you know output is uh, optical output or light is very narrow spectral width or small output beam angle then it is very easy to couple so a semiconductor laser diodes geometry is similar to an eled eled means the uh, edge light emitted diode with light guiding regions surrounding the active region at current below the threshold current leds function as a eled that we already discussed so there are several important important difference between led laser diode and leds laser diodes are also much more temperature sensitive than the either led uh, surface led or edge led increase in the laser temperature significantly reduce laser output power this is also one of the reason to you know to tackle this laser diode very sensitively because increase in temperature is avoided increase in laser temperature beyond certain limit result in the loss of lasing this is also we happen so when lasers are used in many applications the temperature of the laser must be controlled and typically electronic coolers called thermoelectric coolers are used to cool ld these laser diode in system applications now come to a very uh, super luminance or super luminescent diodes so super luminous luminance or luminescence super luminescence occurs when the spontaneous emission of edge leds experience gain due to higher injected current and reflection from facets so super luminance come in the picture when spontaneous emission of eled experience gain sometimes this happens then super luminance come in the picture so super luminous and uh, super luminescent diodes are differentiated from both conventional led and lds although the output is not fully coherent so you may say super luminance is you know uh, is a is a advanced version of uh, leds so led shows super luminance when uh when you when so certain amount of current is to be increased uh which is uh, above the normal current required for leds so this super luminance uh, laser diode sld's emits lights that consist of amplified spontaneous emissions the spectral bit and the beam angle of sld are narrower than that of a conventional led and wider than that of a lds LED means laser diode. LED means light emitting diodes. So an SLD is, in essence, a combination of laser and e and an ELD. So SLD are similar in geometry to lasers, but have no built-in optical feedback mechanism required by laser diode for stimulated emission to achieve lasing. The sum, if I summarize this particular superluminous diodes, is that. these diode doesn't give you a stimulated emission but give you a emission which is which is better than uh, spontaneous emission so whatever the emission that you get in this particular diode is in between stimulated emission and spontaneous emission this is the meaning if you summarize this 
so similar uh, so optical gain resulting from the higher injection currents causing causes the super linear power increases and narrowing of the spectral width this happens so the advantage of this uh, super luminance uh, diode over conventional leds include higher coupled power because of narrow spectral width and narrow spectral width and greater uh, bandwidth the disadvantage includes non linear power current characteristics higher temperature sensitivity and lower reliability and this that's all thank you very much